Welcome to the ETF Edge portion of the Halftime Report. I am Frank Collin. Wall Street's climbing a wall of worry on top of mounting fears over runaway inflation and a dramatically more hawkish Fed. Plus, geopolitical tensions are adding a whole new layer of macro uncertainty to the mix for the global markets. In a flight to safety, gold prices shot up to their highest levels we've seen since just before Thanksgiving, while crude prices are hovering right around seven-year highs. Commodity ETFs suffered net redemptions back in 2021, but they've already racked up more than $6 billion in inflows this year. So how does this latest turmoil factor into the commodities equation? Joining us now is Tom Lydon, CEO of ETF Trends, along with John Davey, founder and CIO of Astoria Portfolio Advisors. Tom, I'm going to kick it off with you. ETFs are still on pace to hit over $700 billion in 2022. Pretty tough to top the record year we had back in 2021. But why do inflows into equity funds still continue unabated despite all the uncertainty out there? Uh, a rise in interest rates in many cases that we're going to see over the course of this year. Equities continue to be favorable for investors. We've seen net redemptions in fixed income ETFs. But surprisingly, we're seeing almost as many buyers in domestic equity ETFs as we're seeing in international ETFs. I think a lot of folks are looking at the valuation opportunities there. And, and rising rates aren't as affecting investors overseas as they, as they are in the U.S. And you mentioned commodities. Yes, commodities have been on fire. Gold has actually been an underperformer compared to other commodities. When you look at food, agriculture, energy, housing, rates are increasing. We're seeing inflation across the board. It cost 17 bucks to get a beer at the Super Bowl yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's not holding back at any time soon. Yeah, those are some first-class problems, though, buying a beer at the Super Bowl. <laughs> John, over to you. How should investors cope with all this elevated risk? Well, I think you want to have commodities in your portfolio. I mean, commodities serve a couple of different attributes. A, they're a hedge against inflation. So S&P is down 7% year-to-date. Bonds are down about 3 4%. You know, you see tickers like PDBC, or BCI, these are broad-based commodity ETFs that are up you know, 10 11%. So they're a hedge against inflation. We know that. It's just that we hadn't had inflation in the last 10 years, so investors didn't really need to look at commodities. But that's starting to change. There's two other things that I think are very interesting that commodities provide in the portfolio. A, they're a hedge against geopolitical risk. So you get Russia-Ukraine tensions. What, what do you see happen? You see stocks go down like they did on Friday. The S&P fell 2%. Today in Europe, European stocks were very weak. But what do you see? You see commodities like gold and oil rally, okay? So the, the wonky term is that they have positive skewness, right? So you have the ability to go up when you have geopolitical risk. Stocks have negative skewness. So you want to own those in a diversified portfolio. The last interesting thing is that commodities actually now giving you like a net uh, positive carry to kind of own it. So the way the futures are rolling, you're actually getting paid own commodities. And that's very different from the last 10 years. So I, I look at tickers like PDBC, BCI, Combi. These are all, you know, okay. broader based commodity ETFs. All right, John, we got to leave it there. Um, we're going to have much more on the ETF flow down where the money is actually going. That's coming up uh, on ETF Edge. Plus, we're going to pick up uh, inflation story reopening and picking up steam. And Tom and John, they're going to be joined by Wendy Wong from New York Life Investments to talk about a different flavor of ESG. Healthy Heart Investing. That's all ahead at 1 p.m. Eastern on ETFedge.cnbc.com. And Halftime is back right after this.